Don't let the goofy name and deviant key art fool you. Pseudo Regalia is a game that sings when you touch the controller. It's of retro style, no doubt. It will proudly tell you that it's based on the N64 and PS1 generation of gaming, an inspiration seen plainly in its art style, low resolution textures, and wide polygonal rooms. But unlike many yesteryear throwbacks, it's not a particular game it's seeking to emulate, but instead a design ethos. You may see Mario 64's DNA in its platforming, but that's probably owed to shared inspiration. That old Miyamoto quote about how they designed Mario's movement for months in a barren room to ensure it was fun in a vacuum comes to mind. Because before it's anything else, Pseudo Regalia is smooth and ultra-technical platforming. It's a speedrunner's paradise, where mastery over the specifics of its movement system affords both speed and sequence breaks. Breaks. And the beauty of that focus is how it pulls you in even if speedrunning isn't your thing. Because my usual reluctance to engage with speedrunner tech and non-intended super precise wall jumps is the fact that I'm usually focused on the game running parallel to those techniques. But when those techniques are the game, the dynamic changes. And the result is a title whose platforming skills are a powerful and fun toolbox regardless of whether or not you care what an 80% run is. Oh, it's also Metroidvania. You wouldn't suspect it from its art style, but it's only a minute into the gameplay before you get your first complete cycle of, huh, wonder how I get past that, to, oh, that's how I get past that. The genre's usual bend towards action platforming is reversed into platforming action. There's like two dedicated combat sequences bookending the entire game. Every opponent in between can be glided past if you know what you're doing. And I'm convinced the only reason the attack button is here is to give you something to press while you're running and some sexy key poses to look at. It's in a Metroidvania's decision making when pathing where Pseudo Regalia thrives, because even after beating the game I have no idea what the critical path was, or even if there was one. It kind of begs the question of if you can really sequence break in the game with such a nebulous relationship to sequence in the first place. I thought I'd cheese my way into getting the wall run far earlier than I was supposed to, only to watch some other folks' playthroughs to find myself almost comically late in acquiring it. It's funny, in a genre that worships double jumping, Pseudo Regalia simultaneously doesn't have one but also has like half a dozen. With combat at the periphery, almost all the power-ups you collect on your adventure are some marginal increase to your platforming ability. Any single power is less impressive than your usual double jump, but together they coalesce into something greater. Your wall jump is a precision demanding forward kick that bounces you at an angle off a wall. But that kick can also be used as a slight range extender to any of your horizontal leaps. Your high jump starts as a downward pogo smash that you can parlay into a backward flip when you're at its apex. And my favorite, no doubt evidenced by all my footage, is a high speed slide that not only lets you skirt under small gaps, but also cancel into a long jump with no cooldown. The flexibility within that moveset, among others, are doing the lion's share of the work in Pseudo Regalia, and help distract from the fact that there's little else to it. The nagging downside isn't the lack of a map, but the lack of identifiable landmarks that ditching a map would normally call for. The majority of the game takes place indoors, and that can occasionally make it hard to establish a frame of reference for everything is. Distinct named districts of the castle have their own look, feel, and sounds, but where they exist in relation to each other was a demanding mental challenge on a first playthrough. But it's hard to complain when navigating it is this enjoyable. Pseudo Regalia may not be anything more than a slick set of movement tools and a simple world to apply them in, but its narrow focus has ensured those tools are as fun as they are flexible. Every challenge in the game is a negotiation between your skills, your character's skills, and gaps between simple geometry. That's as pure a throwback as I can imagine.